Okay, now we're going to do something very interesting, which is to create a feature box um, that is going to be widgetized, and uh, it'll have a slideshow or a slider in it, and it's also going to have a call to action. So it's going to be a two-column feature box. Now, we do that, obviously, in the template that we want it. So we want it in our front page. So the first thing to do is to create a container for that for the feature box. So we'll come over here and select a box to add. And notice how this little thing says asterisk indicates a new box. That means we're creating a box that doesn't already exist. Right? This box, archive intro, home post box, post comments, previous and next, and byline, those boxes exist and could be, be, could be reinserted in the page simply by selecting it. So if we choose byline and we add that box back in, and then we shift drag, we could shift drag byline back into the headline area, and it would, um, you know, it would show up just like it did before. We're not going to do that. But that's how you can do this kind of thing. And what we're going to do, though, is we're going to add an HTML container. So we're going to create a new HTML container. And we're going to call it Feature Box. Doesn't matter what you call it. I would call it something that makes sense to you. Shift drag it over here into container and then down into position below the nav menu. Okay, then we're going to we're going to create a column for the widget and then we're going to create a column for the uh, call to action. And so I'm going to create a new box, again an uh, an HTML container box. And this is going to be, say, well, we're going to just going to call it slideshow, slideshow column. I suppose I could more specifically call it left column, left column. And while we're at it, we'll do that one more time. And we'll create a new box called right column. You could leave these all as containers. But then you'd never know which one you were talking about. So, so we've got a left column and a right column. We'll drag, we'll shift drag the right column and drop it into the feature box, and then the left column and drop it into the feature box. Open up the feature box. You can see we've got our left column and our right column here. And now that we've got our structure in place, now we're going to put the content in. And so, the content for the left column is going to be a widget area. So we're going to create a widget area by coming down here and selecting a widgets box. Add that box. And then we're going to give that widgets box a name. And the name is going to be feature box, pardon me, feature box widgets. Now this name does matter because this is what the widget is going to be called in your a dashboard. So I'd make sure that this is definitely descriptive. I call it feature box widget area. That's what I'm going to call it. And say save to that. And I'm going to shift drag it and drop it into the left column. And then I'm going to create a text box for the call to action. So we'll come back down here and create a new text box. And this text box I'm just going to say is call to action. Okay, so we've created our call to action, and I'm going to shift drag it and drop it into the right column. Okay, so we've got a left column and a right column with a feature box widget area and a call to action. And if we save this template and come over and look at the page, lo and behold, it doesn't look like it's in columns, right? Because the widget box is, the widget area is sitting on top of the text box. Okay, the reason is that we haven't told it, we haven't given it any information about how it should be a column, right? So, 
um, that's what we have to do next. And what we're going to do is borrow the definitions from Thesis Classic, right? Thesis Classic has the setup, has this two column setup already, right? It has a, a container called columns with a content column and a sidebar column. And both of these, all of these things work responsively perfectly. So we are going to, what on earth just happened? I just lost my, um, home front page. Okay, I don't know how that happened, but I lost my feature box somehow in my view there. So, um, oh, I see. I'm actually, I didn't lose it. I was just looking at an old version of it. Okay, here we go. So, it has this these two columns, a content column and a sidebar column. And the way Thesis knows how to style them is because it has assigned them classes. So the container has a class of columns. That is, this columns container has a class of columns. And then the left column has a class of content. And then the right column has a class of sidebar. So that's what we're going to do in our feature box. We're just going to do exactly the same thing. All right, we're going to come over here to our right column, and we're going to give it a class of sidebar. We're going to come over to our left column, and give it a class of content. And then we're going to come over to the feature box and give it a class of columns. Now, as it turns out, I'm also going to give it a, an ID of feature box. And um, it is not my intention here to teach these concepts of, of CSS in this class. I'll be, we'll be teaching about CSS later. And actually, if you watch the Beginner's Guide to the Thesis 2 Skin Editor, you'll get a lot of information about this there, even though some of the things are a little bit different. So when you use a class, when you use an ID, all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to be handled in a, in a separate class. This assumes you already understand the whole class ID thing for, uh, for CSS. So if you don't, we'll, we'll touch on it later. But anyway, we've given the feature box an idea of feature box and a class of columns. And then we've given our left and right columns the same classes as, uh, as the content column in the sidebar. And now the columns will actually look like columns because it will be borrowing exactly the same code as uh, these columns have, right? So now that we've done that, let's just put some stuff in there and then we can check its responsiveness. So we'll come back over to our um, appearance and widgets panel. And now you can see we've got our feature box widget area. Remember, if we have named that feature box widget area fish sticks, it would show up here as fish sticks. So you want to, th th this is one of those cases where the name is important just because it ends up being the name of this. And then we've got a Meteor Slideshow set up in here. So I'm going to take a Slideshow widget and drop it in the Feature Box. And refresh this. OK. So now we have that happening. And then the other thing I want to do is, um, is put a call to action in here. Now, Obviously, it would be nicer if this stuff had its padding, right? And so this gets its padding from something. And in fact, what it gets its padding from, come back over here to the skin editor for a moment. If we, uh, the, the padding that happens in the content column comes from this page post box, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to borrow the post box class for that for our left column. And so it's 
and actually not for the left column, but actually for the widget area. Take this feature box widget area, and what we're going to do is give it the class of post box. At which point it automatically gets all of the padding assigned to the post box and makes it look more like that uh, regular column. So now if we refresh it, now it's got the 27 pixels of padding around it like everything else does. Okay. So then the other thing we have left to do is to put our call to action in our text box. And the first thing actually was to have to get a call to action. So I'm going to go to my Aweber account. This is going to be an Aweber login page or login, I'm sorry, Aweber sign up form. Okay, we're going to go to my generic registration form. This is it here that I created for this. So we'll go to step two, to step three, and install my form. Just going to grab the, the, the JavaScript for that here. And then come back over to the thesis content. and open up my call to action box. Drop in that JavaScript, disable the P tags, save my options. Refresh it. And now I've got a nice little sign up form sitting there in the feature box with my uh, uh, rotating slideshow there sitting on top of the content here. And the nice thing about that whole thing is, is that it is responsive. So if we come back over here to the Responsinator and look at this site in the Responsinator, you know, the, um, the slideshow has reduced in size, the sign up form needs a little bit of work and we'll work on that so it doesn't overhang here. We'll, we'll do that in another section yet. But at least it stacks side by side nicely, right? And then everything else works as it worked on Monday. So it all works the way we want it to work. Right? It's all nice and responsive. Okay.